tab is full of steak and shrimp and tequila. Yes. <laughs> but she just had one tequila, so she's okay to drive. One tequila, two tequila, <laughs> three tequila, tequila more. More. <laughs> I no, had two, I but I'm not had driving. One about an hour and a half ago, probably. Yeah. Georgia Bulldogs just they, they just bought a few of my uh, shipping shipmate things. It just says just bought several to today. Don't ever want shipments going out and arriving not viable. Thank you. Well, we thank you too, Georgia Bulldogs. You'll have great results with this, and uh, we're glad that you're part of our, our little shipmate family. Um, okay. Somebody says here, if you love your pet, never breed it. Okay. <laughs> That's your opinion. Oh, somebody's asking about the Bakia uh, coat color test, and they want to know about the KBKY. So the answer is, on the Bakia coat color test, you've got to put something in on both sides for every dog. If you don't, you'll get really confusing results. And the answer is, if the dog is KBKY, it's brindle on one, it's got one copy of brindle, one copy of not brindle, you better put them both in there, otherwise you will get a bunch of stuff that will not make any sense. Mm -hmm. Well, here's Nancy Macy, and we believe what Nancy Macy says is right. People are so stupid. If you want to adopt, then adopt. If you don't want to buy a purebred dog, then th then don't buy it. Well, I thought you were going to say something else. Personal then... choice in a free country. That's the great thing about America, isn't it? Yes, That's what I love is. about America, by the way. Yes, I'm from England, yes. and uh, not that England's not a great place, but America is the land of the of, of it's the land of the brave, isn't it? But it's also the land of the free, and I mean that means a lot. You don't know what it's like until you've lived in a place that's not as free as America. Um, uh, Mike says, hello, I have a puppy and she has an umbilical hernia and she's only nine weeks old. Vet said it would be go away and cause no harm or problems. Would it affect me breeding her in the future or cause any problems with the AKC? Yeah, no, sure not when, to know. Have it fixed whenever she's having babies. It will not affect, unless it's a huge hernia. We're talking about a little tiny pea size umbilical hernia. And if it's a little bitty tiny pea size, now if it's a big one, you know, about that big on the tummy of the puppy, get it fixed. But if it's a little bitty tiny, you can get that fixed when your female is pregnant, fixed, going in for a C-section. Have it right. fixed then. But it is not going to affect. Well, when you have a C-section, it's going to get fixed because they're going to cut right along that yeah. line. Yeah. And, and then when they sew it all back together again. So what's, what a hernia. you're not paying two bills, but if it's a huge hernia, it's so, fixed. So what a hernia is, is here's the, um, here's the uh, my hands represent the, uh, um, the abdominal wall. And what's happened is, is when the dog is attached to mum through the placenta, it's connected through a tube, the umbilical tube. And that tube then dries up, falls off, and this little hole closes up. Right. If it doesn't close up completely, like my fingers are here, my tongue is part of the intestines that could poke through it. So the problem gets to be is if that hole oh. is big enough, enough of the intestines poke through, it can constrict the intestines, yeah. and then you've got a problem. That's on big hernias. A big hernia, which I would, it depends on the size of the dog, but right. a hernia the size of an eraser, don't fix it. I'm telling you, this... when you watch puppies play, yes. they're rough and tumble and holding one down and it's struggling to get up. And sometimes it just tears the little thin lining yes. there across there right. and it tears. It's not, it's not a hereditary thing. No, no, now, no. Inguinal hernias, which is the one that are in the crease of the thigh, that's a different story. Right. You don't breed those dogs. Right. But back to this umbilical hernia. Why do you get an umbilical hernia? So one of the things that Tammy's talking about is rough housing and play. Typically those dogs didn't show any sign of a hernia whatsoever no. at all. All of a sudden they're rough housing and they're six, seven, eight weeks old and pop. Oh, and man. Like, There's what a hernia. You... <laughs> You've had a hernia. <laughs> yes. I have a hernia. I, I, my hernia developed about five years ago and I'm not getting it fixed and I'll live with it till they put me in the ground. Or burn me up, or or Tammy shoots me. I don't know which one's going to come. Yeah, first. I'll probably come first. That'll come first. Yeah. So you had a hernia from doing lots of sit-ups when you were uh, after you had a baby. Oh yeah, yeah. Getting back yeah. in shape. Yep. So imagine that. Yeah. Me getting into shape. Yeah. Well, you're in pretty good shape. That was my younger days. You're in good shape, Tammy. But so the point here is, no, it's fine, completely fixable. If it's the size of your thumb or bigger, get it fixed. If it's the size of a racer, just keep an eye on it. When she has a C-section, 
it it gets fixed. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And by the way, the AKC has zero to do with this. Right. The AKC has zero to do with everything to do with it. The, all the AKC does is, in, in and, and I'm not bashing the AKC because they're fine. The AKC does a couple of things. They make sure that you are breeding purebred bred dogs and they give you AKC uh, paperwork to verify that. And if you are an AKC accredited kennel, then they will come and do inspections, which we had a video on that, to make sure that you are doing the minimum standard that they require to do right by the dogs. That's it. But other than that, the AKC... You want to see healthy dogs there. If you have a problem with a dog and, and you're complaining with the breeder and you think you're going to go to the AKC and the AKC is going to do something, they ain't going to do anything. Hey, Janeth. Alma Torre says, Hi James, thank you for all the great info. When would you recommend doing the second AI? Two days after the first. Or start the first one on an IDEX machine on a level of 15 and finish the second one when it's 20 or higher. Leanne de Leon says, Hi, your channel does lots of good information. Do you have experience with a female did not ovulate the entire heat cycle. What would you recommend to a Frenchie that does not ov ovulate? Okay, well, this is kind of a long involved conversation here. So let's just, uh, let's get me so I'm not so dark here. Here we go. Um, the sun goes out and it comes back in. Yes. Clouds. Right, so, um, well look, if you've got a dog that hasn't ovulated, the first question is how do you know that hasn't happened? Because all dogs that go through a heat cycle, basically they ovulate or they, or they have a split heat. Young dogs that are less than a year and three months old can have this happen to them where the heat cycle is not smoothed out and they, they really don't ovulate and they start back up in six months. That's pretty much it. Dogs that are two or three years old that don't ovulate and don't have heat cycles, there are things that you can do with hormones to bring them in. We've never done it. We don't really like messing around with this stuff, but there's some stuff called... PG 600, you can go do some Googling on that. Or you can mess up the insides of your female. Yeah, yeah. that's not real. We're just not a big fan no. of that, way. No, we're not. No. Oh, somebody's looked at one of my videos from March 2000. But uh, these people that are money hungry, they're going to do it. Yeah. Just right. get another female. Bad thing to do. Yes. Not good. Right. You don't care. Where are we located? We're in Oklahoma. Where the wind blows gently down the plain. No, That's it's, come a on, sing joke. it. Come on, how do you sing no. it? No. Oh, Oklahoma, where the wind. No. Nobody wants to hear my sing. You're not watching this channel, listen to my singing. <laughs> <laughs> you are. Send your money today. Oh, here we go. I'll leave this one to you. Charm stars. Anyone who removes the dew claw from a puppy should have their thumbs cut off. I do. Hey, look, here we oh, go. Both look. of us. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happened to us when we dew clawed a dog. Somebody came with a pair of bolt cutters, Tammy and me, and cut off our damn thumbs. What's a thumb? I don't know. It's not opposable. I'm not opposed to a thumb. I know that. Anyway, yes. You know what you can do with your thumb? <laughs> <laughs> is the sun shining? Yeah. Oh, you dear. can file this topic alongside docking tails and circuses. Oh, no, golly. Oh, so was, uh, huh? Oh. Okay. Mm. Um, I'm trying to think of a, of a... Don't purchase puppies with the removed parts. Cruelty. I'm trying to think of a rebuttal to that, of where we would remove parts from things. I mean, look, I've had my appendix removed. I've removed some parts off of James, and she he's has. okay. I have. <laughs> Oh, yeah. me. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> how much milk, how many mils of milk should a puppy of three weeks drink in 24 hours? Golly. Oh, wow. This is like one of those math questions, wow. isn't it? How, if how Jane has three apples, that? if Jane has three apples and she gives two of them to Bill, and Bill eats one and a half and trades for an orange, how many, how many bananas does Jake have? Well, I think I have no idea. Well, I do have an idea on this. The answer if is: if you're bottle feeding, you do. But if you're at nurse, the pups are nursing a well, mama. Well, well, no. Like, we, what the hell? Well, I mean, here's the rule. I mean, the rule of thumb is this: a puppy gets its body weight in ounces in cc's every three hours. So a ten-ounce okay. puppy 
gets 10 cc's every three hours. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna get, you know, if it's every three hours, three and 24 goes eight, eight times three is gonna get 24 ounces. So there's your answer on that. But look, here's the deal. I don't know what you're doing with a three week old puppy, but if you've got a puppy that still needs to nurse and it's got problems, I would get that onto soft food, which we use raw canine, Puppy moose, starter moose. Puppy starter moose. Yep. And get them where they're eating food and getting off mum. That's the answer on that one. Yeah. And the other answer is if you're too, if you are bottle feeding, bottle feed till the puppy's had enough. It'll tell you because it'll, it'll, it'll take the spit the nipple out. I know you're gonna miss me, but I gotta get out and go in. You gotta get do the pee pads, pee pads for, for the doggies, puppies. For the puppies. Yeah. S. Thompson later. says, hi, quick question. I'll uh, see you tomorrow, honey. Should I give my pregnant female fendibenzabol for deworming because I didn't do it before she was at, had a TCI, transcervical insemination? And how long and how many milligrams? And what prenatal do you recommend for pregnant dogs? Okay. So, I think that we don't generally give any medications to a dog that's pregnant other than prenatal vitamins and folic acid. And I've got a whole video on cleft palates about giving five milligrams of folic acid to pregnant dogs for so the moment they've been AI until they whelp. Um, so, but if you've got a dog that's got worms, worm it. And you can use Safeguard, which is Fendabendazole. It's an extremely safe worm, and I don't think that'll be any problem at all. As far as nursing mums are concerned, same thing. If you give the mum medication, it will get in the milk and the puppies will get it. But I think it's very, very safe. And I would not just routinely treat, some people do worm their dogs before they give birth. Um, we don't do that. Uh, I, it's probably very, I mean, it, I don't know whether that's the right answer. I really don't know. We never had a problem with this. I mean, we just, we worm when we see the evidence of worms or when puppies are two weeks old, we start with Nemex or Paramental or whatever that other product is, it's the same thing. And then you can definitely can fender benders or safeguard your mama at that point. Hi, I'm saving for Frenchie. I'm wondering how much your baby, oh, our babies go for. Well, I don't have any girls at the moment, and I mean, the answer is I'm not going to talk about prices here because with this whole video is not our intent here is not to try to sell puppies, it's really to give information out. But you can call us. Um, So somebody's asking about the fine care progesterone machine. Question I have, only two girls, only five months old. With only two, is it worth buying a progesterone machine versus just going to the vet every day when the time comes? Um, okay, so uh, I love the, okay. Well, here's, look, we've had a machine now for about a year and a half. We've been doing this for a long time. Should have, and we don't have a lot of girls, but we do do a lot of studying for other people. So that's a good reason to have a machine. But look, you miss out on a single puppy because you got your timing wrong. You could have paid for the machine. You completely mess up a C-section and get that wrong and lose a whole litter. You could have bought five machines. So having a machine gives you control of the whole process. You don't have to take your dog to the vet where it's number one expensive, it's time consuming, and there are sick puppies, that are sick dogs that have been in that place. I am a firm believer of the machine. Um, and it only has to get you one puppy or save you from, from getting a mess up on a litter and it's more than paid for itself. So if you're gonna do this, if you're gonna get into this, if you are gonna routinely have some litters, you know, once a year or whatever, I think that you should have a plethora of things that you should get and of which we offer because we do this. The machine, an incubator, puppy care kits, a microscope. These are all things that I think make sense for you to have. And uh, you know, it's like an incubator. When do you need an incubator? Our last two litters, they were both born in C-section, were brought home in the incubator. So it was used one time for that. The incubator is left fired up by the, uh, the whelping area. Haven't had to use it. Puppies have been great. But I've been in situations where one or two puppies have had some problems. And if I hadn't had an incubator, they wouldn't have made it. And the problem is, you know that the time you're going to have a problem is always 3 o'clock, on a Saturday night in the in the morning. That's the time you have a problem and you're not finding an incubator anywhere. And if a puppy gets cold, give it a couple of hours, the puppy's gone. So I think that it's, it kind of goes under the same thing. Be prepared, you know, 
look, if you're going to go on a hiking trip, should you have a first aid kit? You bet you should have a first aid kit. Because if somebody gets hurt and you don't have a first aid kit, it could be a life and death situation. So I think that the progesterone machine is not necessarily a life and death situation, but it can be for timing C-sections. So, of course, we're biased. We sell the product because we think it's great, but you should have one. Oh, somebody said we can't wait to see your fluffies. Yep, or well, we can't wait to see our fluffies too. We've got a first, our first litter of full fluffies coming from Denali, bred to Lola, that will be here in about, uh, I think, uh, about five weeks. So uh, I've got to go check her this weekend and make sure she's bred. Oh, somebody's talking about the enema where I've said to go put some dishwater soap in the in the water that you squirt up their butt. He said, I did this all the time in PEDS. Um, you can use castle soap too. So the answer is, yeah, a little bit of soapiness in the enema definitely helps uh, the poop slide out. Uh, what are your thoughts on Facebook pay? Um, I don't know. I've never used it. I mean, I think any of these things, you just got to do your due diligence to make sure that uh, if you're taking money in these... For Look, the only way that you can reliably take money from somebody and it doesn't get reversed, because we're talking about the video that I did on scams, any time that you take money from somebody, if you've taken cash, make sure it's not counterfeit. If you've taken a check, make sure it's cleared the bank completely, not just your bank, but it's cleared their bank as well. There's things that I know cannot be undone would be wire transfers, um, um, cash as long as it's not counterfeit, Western Union, Walmart to Walmart. I know those are safe. Everything else probably got some uh, riskiness to it. Oh, here's an interesting one. Um, this is Jonah Monte de Rosa says, I appreciate your both plans, blah, blah, blah. I have a question about fawn coloring. I recall you mentioning fawns do not have brindle. I swear I can see some brindle hairs on my girl's tail tips of her ears and a few on her chest. Uh, can you go into that in more detail? Well, the answer is, is you have a sable dog. What a sable dog is, it's a fawn dog that has a copy of 10 points. So it's a, a fawn dog. And fawn dogs are normally dogs that, well, fawn dogs are dogs that don't have brindle that are A-Y-A-Y. But if you have a dog that is, uh, doesn't have brindle and is A-Y-A-T, then the tan points express themselves as little dark tips on the end of the hairs, and it then becomes a sable dog. So it's, it's a dog that basically looks formed with a kind of a black kind of a shadow to it. That's a, 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 a sable or a, uh, that's another name for it, I can't think what it is now. Should she even say it in here? Um, but anyway, that's what you got there. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so Catherine Sexton commented based on something that I said the other day about somebody was complaining about you should buy, you should go get dogs from the pound and we shouldn't be breeding them. And I made the comment that I doubt you'd ever find a, a Frenchie in a shelter and I think they're all very well looked after. And she can, confirms that by saying, I worked in a shelter for over four years, never once saw a French bulldog. Exactly. So French is... You know, when you've got expensive dogs, people people care about expensive things and they look after them properly. And so uh, it's rather different than people just letting dogs run around, you know, Heinz 57 dogs. And there's nothing wrong with a Heinz 57 dog, but if you've got a Heinz 57 dog, then it should be spayed. And if you want a Heinz 57 dog, go get one from the pound. Uh... Yeah, so someone's talking here, I was talking about out in our place about being careful about dogs getting it eaten by coyotes and owls and hawks, especially little puppies, and she said, uh, what's the difference between a Frenchie and a bunny? Um, this is JF. The bunny knows he's a meal, and I live in an area that coyotes, hawks, owls, and bobcats in the middle of the day. Uh, coy coyotes and bobcats can easily jump over six-foot fences. Uh, yeah, exactly. And, that, I, and, that, and that, that first part is exactly right. You know, a, a puppy doesn't know how to behave in the wild. It's not been taught by its mum. So um, the other day we had a situation, I think I mentioned this, where there was a coyote close to the uh, to the side of the house and we kind of live out in the country 
And uh, Kit, who is now seven, eight months old and weighs 14, 13 pounds, she was about to become coyote breakfast and she doesn't know any better. She'd go right up to that coyote and start playing with it. So a bunny's not gonna do that. So they're very vulnerable, so just be careful. What kind of food do you recommend? This is Mike GB. So we recommend, this is 20 minutes long. I better shut this down here, this is the last one. So what, so what do we recommend? We feed um, life's abundance to our adults. We feed royal canine puppy to our puppies. And they're Frenchies, but we use the bulldog version because they're a little bit bigger and we're getting worried about them getting choked on small pieces. Um, and we feed royal canine puppy starter moose that we typically start that at about four weeks old. And that's in the process of weaning puppies off mum. And that's the point where when you do that, um, mum's not picking a poop up anymore. And now you are unfortunately gonna be on poop patrol, but puppies start putting some weight on quickly when you do that. Hey, thanks for watching this. We would really appreciate if you subscribe to us. If you've got questions, write them down below and we'll maybe we'll get to them. And everybody be safe. Bye everybody.